Hey folks, welcome back to the ranch. What I want to do first off by starting this video is apologize for some of the audio that's coming up. It's a little bit windy. I didn't have a windscreen on. I didn't realize it till it was after it was filmed, but I can't go back in time and fix it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back here several months, show you kind of where we started and then fast forward to now and where we're at and how well this method works. So, hey, if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and like, subscribe. It really helps us out with our algorithm. We sure appreciate it. So check this out. Hopefully you can use this method to improve bad spots on your land too. So what we got here is uh, got a bunch of hay that we've hand spread, hand broadcast. Hey, no. What we're trying to correct here is we have this spot that's had way too much impact on it. So what we got here is, is some really poor ground. It's had too much animal impact. Look at that right there. See that? That's an auto water. That is a frost proof auto water and I'm very, very blessed to own it. Thank you very much to the people who put that in before we purchased this farm. So the problem is though, is because this was ran more of a continuous grazing operation. Fine, good, great. That's how you want to run, do it. But that's not how we do. We're rotating much more frequent, high impact grazing. And uh, what we're trying to uh, eliminate is this. We're trying to give way more rest. <clears throat> to other folks, maybe it applies different, but what we found out now, the two years of being on this land in two back-to-back -back droughts, is it's just got to have more time to recover. So how do you do that? Put your animals tighter. Even if you have to supplement with some hay, I would. I wouldn't go and destroy my pastures that are going to give me less yield and return the following year because I overgrazed them. So if you're going to feed hay one way or another, you might as well leave more plant matter intact so your plant can grow faster to recover quicker. So anyway, that's my little speech on that. So why are we doing this? We're just mulching, you know? Uh, the whole idea of intensive grazing is so you get this matting down effect of this when it was erect and alive. The animal takes a bite of it, part of it, and then smashes the rest down to the ground. <laughs> That's what we're kind of simulating here. No, we don't have the kneading effect. No, we're not breaking cap soil. But what we are is we're shading it, cooling the soil, um, retaining moisture, and just making a place that's much more habitable for microbes and other living organisms. So that's what we're doing. That was the long drawn out version of taking some of this and spreading it like a weirdo out here as my neighbors stare through their windows. <laughs> what are they doing? Hey, I just take a pitchfork, scrape it off the bale a little bit at a time and kind of then fluff it. So it doesn't just come off a big old wad. You know, just want to obscure the ground. A little bit of this in here probably a hair thick, but we have a bunch of clover coming up in here and uh, I really want to give it every opportunity to flourish. We haven't had legumes on this farm in a long, long time. There's a bunch of buttercup in here. This is nasty. We don't want that. But just up here, I think I probably just covered it. We're starting to get, we got some nettle. Hey, your shadow. We got a bunch of nettle coming in, which is fine. I'm, I'm good with that. It serves a purpose. Um, then we got clover coming up. There's a little bit right here. My wife really likes her shadow, right where you're trying to look. So anyway, just a few, but it's there's areas that it's extremely thick, like that little explosion there. So I, I'm, I wanna save all my legumes, oh my gosh. Uh, you know, instead of going and buying nitrogen fertilizer, let's have clover that comes in. When it dies, it releases nitrogen to the, the surrounding plants. Um, awesome. There's Grayson having himself just the best eight-year-old life. Surprised he got his clothes on. He was actually, had, he was all the way down to his skinnies earlier and he was down there in the creek. What a goon. Look at a little gray there, woman. Does he? She didn't say anything. She's afraid to try to roast me back on air. <laughs> I'm just not as good as you are. I'm just meaner, apparently. That's where my boy Elliot gets it from. He's pretty sharp at the tongue. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, back to business. I want to touch on something real quick here. We're just going to kind of keep interrupting this video. This dam, you might have seen me already cover it in uh, mulch like this once with hay. <laughs> well, when you put it down and then you're in a drought and nothing grows, uh, and then you put your cattle back in here, apparently they really, really like old hay. 
that's been spread out on the dam because they like ate it first. They came in here, mopped it up, and then went and grazed stockpile. So, um, yeah, it got taken away. That was this fall. So, we're putting it back on and uh, we're not going to let them on it until it's established. Don't forget, don't put your cattle on your, your mulching, they'll eat it. All right, guys, so here we are. Fast forward to April 27th, same year. This is the exact same spot that we spread all that hay. So let me flip you around here. I'm gonna show you. I think you're gonna see the results really do speak for themselves. I'm gonna try and keep some wind off the mic for you. But let's just look around here. This was all that non-vegetated, you know, it was pretty much just, oh, you all right over there, dog? Bo, he loves snacking on orchard grass. All the dogs do, orchard grass. That's the favorite snack out here in the pasture for dogs. If you don't know what orchard grass is, this is it right here, this is some of it. It's beautiful, highly palatable, good protein, great forage for ruminants, and apparently also dogs. This thing almost didn't have a blade of anything on it this last summer. It got overgrazed, and it just never really did good anyway. It's poor soil, it's real gravelly. So here's some hay we put down and unfortunately it's just a hair too thick it's actually you can see the critters have been just chewing it up it's really starting to turn into a mulch kind of fine and uh, you can see how it's look at the soil this is really important let's get a good look at this so gently i'm able to lift that soil see how it's starting to clump together those are gluons that's coming from it's coming from your fungus in your soil and it starts giving your soil structure Plus you got earthworms down here. I don't really see any right now. Oh, there's a big old grub. Look at that guy. Look at that guy, gnarly. He's big, I mean, I'm next to my finger. I got big old sausages. But this soil is normally highly compacted and just trash. Look at that. You can't do that around here. Look at that big old hole. What the hell is that? But it's starting to clump. You're looking for that cottage cheese texture. When you got that, you know you got something good. <laughs> Okay, here we are, it's June 4th. We fast forwarded after we've spread all of this hay. This has all come up naturally. Come on over here and take a look at this. This was all in the seed banks. We have a ton of white clover. You can see we have hop clover. Now go ahead and look down here. You can see this is starting to vegetate. We've got a little Bermuda in here. It looks like there's a few crab grasses coming in. Uh, obviously we still have some buttercup, but this place was covered in buttercup. And what this is, is a low spot. There used to be a fence corner here and the animals would just stand here years and years ago and it beat this down and it was really heavily compacted so all it ever was was a mud hole well you can see there's still some hay that we spread there's a little bit of litter and it's creating now an environment for grasses to come in so but i mean look at this this is amazing the stuff works really really well i'm telling you this is how you heal damaged soil just mulch it put down some hay you likely already have the seed in the seed bank and so there you go boom voila it's like magic look we got some red clover coming in lots of white clover i'm gonna try not to smash this all down it's so beautiful we got fescue now mind you we're letting all these fields go right now we're letting them get very very mature we're resting them and stockpiling we're gonna actually have a combine come in and take our seed crop off of this it's just another great way to generate some income especially in the time of year when a farm isn't or a ranch isn't maybe necessarily generating much yeah let's just keep kind of cruising out here and just let's pan around and show everybody what we got i'm probably just filling my boots full of seed i'm a shotgun right now it's absolutely gorgeous just absolutely gorgeous it's all vegetated you know there's a few spots you can look in here they're still working on closing in like right here right but there's there's grass starting it's coming in it's absolutely beautiful in summary what we did is we took uh, maybe an hour, hour and a half, and a half a bale of hay. We went and spread it by hand, and that's it. That was all the magic. Uh, look over here, look, there's a stand of Timothy grass coming in right next to that. You can see it, it looks like a, like a, almost like a pipe cleaner. Some beautiful Timothy, got a lot of Forbes. Got a little bit of sawbriar. Now, if you're not from these parts here, this is called sawbriar, at least that's what uh, the common name is. This is nasty stuff. It's got a hooked thorn on it, but the cattle love it they eat that stuff up, especially at high stocking rates. So, excuse me, high stocking densities. They'll kill this stuff. But here you go, here's your, here's your Timothy coming in. I mean, we got orchard grass here. You know, we've got just a lot of really beautiful different grasses, a lot of biodiversity, and it's just pumping it out. Something I'm gonna say I noticed too. This, this black walnut, we thought we were gonna lose it. 
this last year. It defoliated almost completely. You can see a few of the limbs that have died, but this thing has rebounded really, really well this spring. We've had, it's been cooler, it's been rainier, and the ground is covered here now. So we have a lot of legumes that are hopefully fixing nitrogen. They're gonna help this tree. We're gonna keep this ground covered. We're never gonna overgraze this again. We're never gonna set back lanes to waters on this, on this ranch ever again. We're always gonna be running mobile water. This is a really great method to take and heal your soil, guys. If you got a bad spot, just put some hay on it. It is that simple. There's nothing more magical about it than that. It just, and rest rest right cover your land and rest it and you'll have a diverse beautiful sward come in and make your land more productive all right so that's it that's the whole magic right there put some hay on your ground spread it around not too thick to allow germination you're going to probably have seed in your seed bank it's going to come through give it plenty of rest it'll heal up hey if you guys like this video please like share subscribe any of those things it really helps us out with the algorithm and uh if you want to check out some of our merch we got a link down below also see what we got in our store father's day is coming up maybe you need a little something we got a bunch of really beautiful leather that's custom made just for us here at tick creek ranch all right that's it from us here on the ranch we'll see you on the next one thanks